When beginning any project in the round, the conventional way of starting is to begin by making a foundation or a base chain and joining that with a slip stitch to make a ring and then working your first set of stitches into that ring. And that's a very straightforward way of beginning any project and you generally end up with this hole in the middle. But there is another way to do the beginning and that's using a method called the magic ring technique and you can see in this one which I've used the magic ring how the center hole is very very tight and with this technique you can vary how open you want that hole to be and for some projects like a hat where you want it to be very tight and closed this is the perfect way to begin so I'm going to show you how to do a magic ring beginning as an alternative way to start your project so we start with our yarn with the tail end facing you at the front and the working ball at the back. And I'm just going to just put my hook down and begin by wrapping the yarn with my palm up over my first two fingers. So just cross it over and clamp that with my thumb. Now turn my hand over so it's running across my knuckles to make two parallel lines under my ring finger and out over my little finger. So I've got my two threads now waiting to be used. Now with my picking up my hook, I'm going to run the hook with the crook facing down under the very first thread and I'm going to catch the second thread and pull it back underneath the first thread. And at this point I'm going to do a turn. So I've now turned the crook upwards and that's just to give me a little bit of an anchor with my loop. Now I'm going to make a slip stitch by I'm going to pull out my fingers and here you can see there's a thread and I'm going to use that thread as my tension thread to pull through my slip stitch. So I'm going to catch it and pull it through and there we have that in place. Now I can take my fingers out and when I turn it over you can see I have my ring. And as well as that, I've also got my extra thread from my tail wrapped inside the ring, which will make it much easier now for working my first round. So my ring is now ready to use. And I'm going to begin by adding 12 trebles into that ring. So we begin with our three chain just to get, get the height. And that's going to be counted as one treble stitch and now I'm going to work a further 11 into this ring. So yarn on because I'm doing treble stitches into the ring and I'm making sure that I'm going to cover these two threads so I'm not going to pull those out. There's my first one and as I do it I can just pull that round and I'm going to do another one and each time I do my treble stitch I work over those two threads. So all into this ring. If you feel that the ring is getting a little bit baggy or loose, with your little tail end just gently pull it in and that will just make it a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to keep on going so that I have my full 12 for the beginning of this project each time making sure I cover both my threads. Let's just check how many we've got. So I'm counting the three chain as my first treble stitch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So two more. It's 11 and finally one more 12. Now at this stage the ring is still looking very big but this is where the magic part comes in. So we've got this nice crescent of stitches and now I'm going to just gently pull the tail and as I pull it you'll see the circle is beginning to now close up. I'm not going to do it completely yet because I actually want to close 
the ring with a slip stitch so I'm going to go into the top of my chain if you close it up completely at this stage it's sometimes a little bit tricky to see where your stitch is going into so one two three there's the top of my chain I can go into there with my normal slip stitch and at this point I'm now going to pull in nice and firmly that tail and you can see now how neatly that center looks for the beginning of the project using the magic ring technique. <laughs> 